Hi, welcome to our Central Division Review. I'm Keith. I'm Chris. And we're the 7th D Podcast. Um, do you have any surprises you see in the Central this year, Chris? Uh, yeah, my main surprise is how far up in the standings Minnesota is this year. I mean, again, another team, they didn't make a lot of changes to what they had last year, but they did bring in Eric Stahl. They did. He's having a great year. Which I thought was a dumb idea. I was like, oh, there's another wasted spot on, you know, the Minnesota team that needs more offense. He's doing great for them. Uh, Not only if he could have done that for your Rangers. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anyway, uh, Devin Dubnik has been a monster in goal. If he keeps up those numbers, there is no way he's not winning the Vezina. Winning the Vezina. Yeah, I mean, that's absurd. He's currently sitting with a 948 save percentage. And 1.55 goals against. 1.55 goals against, yes. Like, that's a team that doesn't really score a lot. So he's, no. It, it is Devin Dumnick winning. Well, yeah, games. the thing with Minnesota is they focus on their defense and their goaltending, and then they just hope to win 2-1, to one, one nothing. They yeah. don't, but they're actually getting more goal scoring than that than yeah. this year. So I mean, they have Ryan Suter. I mean, he's getting 27 minutes a game. Which is actually down from yeah. last year. With a 22 plus minus. Yeah. Which means nothing's happening on his defense event. No, yeah. If he's out there... Just hold on to it, wait a few minutes, yeah. he'll get off the ice, and then... And if Parisi can find that scoring touch, this team might be scary. Yeah, Parisi has been a big disappointment for them. If he can get going, that's dangerous. Yeah, because right now, I think Saul was second on the team in goals. Their goal leader on this bio team is Charlie Coyle. Having a big year. Yeah. Good for him. He's stepping up while other people haven't quite gotten there yet. That's what you need from your team, though. Uh, what about you, Keith? What do you think? Any surprises? Um, I'm not really sure. Probably the Blues, I guess. I'm still not a big fan of them. I mean, I like Taron Sanko, and after that... There is a bit of a drop-off, yeah. but... I mean, they still have a very... Their defense is where their strong suit is. They have a very offensive def- defense. I mean, Shattenkirk, Peter Angelo, Pareko. I mean, he's a little slow on the points right now, but... He still... He has 15 assists. Yeah. I mean, but last year when he came onto the scene, he had that in, like, his first, like, 15 like, games. Like, three goals, not assists yeah. or something. In, like, his first 15 games, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so. Allen's save percentage isn't very good. No. He's on my fantasy team. It's been kind of disappointing this year. Started off good. Month of December, terrible. It's just... like His goals against isn't anything super high so i mean he's just not facing a lot of shots no he faces that, like yeah. 23 shots a game but gives up three or four goals so it's it it doesn't look so good the thing with the central division is like chicago's number 1 exactly where you expect them like to there, be like is there any surprise on that team there's for some the central division there's so much disappointing yeah. teams go like happening right now the i mean Avs, the stars the Col- yeah, we could start even with Nashville. I thought they were going to be so much better this year. However, I knew the one weak spot uh, was going to be their goaltending, and it's proving to hurt them. Yep. But it's they just still aren't really getting it going otherwise either. You were kind of, I was kind of hoping that the forwards and the defense you know, would be able to pick up the slack, and it's not really happened yet. But if they can start starting Soros and goal the Predators... It's- I've seen Soros play the I last met, couple remember, of games. I, I mentioned him to you like the beginning of the year. I hope he gets a few starts. Yeah. I watched him the other night. He played against the Rangers. was amazing. I've seen uh, – I think he played the game after that too again. Great games. His he's, first five NHL games, he has a .950. I don't percent. get why they're not starting him more because Pecorine in the last two weeks is 2-3 and three with a 3.33 goals against and an 8.82 save percentage. Why are you not starting <laughs> Soros more? Well, he started. Uh, he started two, two of in the a last row. Three. Yeah, I think it was two in a row. Maybe two of the last three. Yeah, and he's done well in both of them. The thing is with him is he's small. He's a lot smaller than most goalies in the league right but now. He's quick, but he's so fast. He gets yeah. from post to side to side, post to post. So and if you go on with a plan against the Predators, like oh, okay, Rene can't go side to side. This is our game plan. Oh, sorry, we put Soros in gold tonight. Yeah, like, well, get, change crap. of plans. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, using the two of them together in combination, I think would be good. Don't announce your goalie until shortly before the game. Yeah. Yeah. Subban, I don't know why, I just don't like him. He's been turning around. He got off to a slow start. 
I think kind of there was a lot of pressure and maybe a lot of kind of still almost shock from the trade. Yeah. That it was kind of just like, wait, I'm really not playing in Montreal anymore. And he just like, didn't step it up like Weber did. No, Weber went up there and took, you know, full advantage of the opportunity he was given. Yeah, luckily Yossi started to turn it around for them. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Ellis still having a bit of a slow year for Nashville. But, I mean, the forwards, they still have, you know, some depth up there. I'd like to see yeah. more out of Ryan Johansson, though. Not- he's got... Yeah, Hansen scored most of his points on the power play right now. Yeah, just, there's so much potential in him, and you can kind of see it there, and you've always kind of seen it there. He just doesn't seem to put it all he together. He can't break that, just that last yeah, wall. Yeah, there's a little wall there, and he just can't get over it. One person I do like watching play for them is Art Vincent. Yes. Guy is so fast. Yeah. He flies up and down the rink. I would like to see him actually get a little more ice time, which they've started giving him an extra minute or two, but... I'd like to see him moved up into the more of a top six role than a third line. I think Ellis probably needs to be traded. I think so, too. There's I mean, a right-handed defenseman. I mean, there's a team out in Arizona looking for that right-handed <laughs> defenseman. There's a lot of teams yeah. even still looking for a defenseman like that. Uh, Toronto's looking for a defenseman like that. Toronto's looking for a defense. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fair enough point. But, yes, I mean, there's a lot of options. I think his time has run its course. Time is up. In Nashville, he needs to move on to a place where he can actually take a step up. I think he's kind of plateaued because he's not getting a chance to move up. I mean, you got Yossi, you have Subban ahead of you. You had Weber. They're not <laughs> going to make you the puck mover, even though that's your specialty. Yes, I mean you're. <laughs> but yeah, he'll he'll eventually get traded somewhere, I think, and he will put up really good numbers, and he will become a very solid defenseman for some team and makes oh, some he team will. very happy. Yeah, he, I mean, he kind of lacks the size, but he makes up for for his actual skills that he yeah. has. Uh, moving right down below, one of my biggest disappointments, the Dallas Stars. You know I have a gigantic man crush <laughs> on Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. Yes, you do. And uh, I, I mean, I thought this team was you know, going to be challenging Chicago for the number one spot again this year. And they're not. They're they're not even in the playoffs. They're in twenty first place in the league. I mean, they they're scoring not as well as they normally do. Well, yeah, last year they were putting up way more goals than they like, are this year. You look year. at the difference really between the Stars and uh, Blackhawks goaltending. Yeah, that's a huge one. But I mean, Crawford's got great numbers. Scott Darling stepping in for him while he's on IR. Yeah, the, well, Crawford's actually back tonight now. Okay, he's uh, first missed ten games, but Darling. Put up near identical numbers. I think Darling has a 927 save percentage on the year, and uh, Crawford has like a 929. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah, it's they're like two within two percentage points like that. Of and each then Lennon started half the game for the Stars and doesn't even have a nine. No, I mean Niemi is doing better than he did last year. He's at like a 911 save percentage. Yeah, but that's still nothing. But that's still under what you want from a starter. I really was hoping that they would try to do something to fix their goaltending situation. But the problem is, is they're both uh, Lettinen and uh, Niemi are making like $5 million a piece. Yeah. There's like $10.5 $10. million wrapped up in and two terrible goalies. And the, yeah, they're not young. Uh, their defense really is showing that they hurt Goligoski being gone. Yeah. Uh, Lindbergh's numbers dropped. Yeah. he. I. That's a. That's probably the biggest disappointment for them. Is Are you sure it wouldn't year, be Patrick Sharp? A lot of he's been hurt most True, of the year. But I mean, in his nine games, he had a goal. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think he's been a bit overrated, and I think uh, injuries. He was injured a lot last year. He had some concussion yeah. problems. I think that's all really catching up to him. But Klingberg is really where I'm super disappointed in this team. Last year, they got so many points. They scored so many goals because he was setting everyone up. Yeah, and he would chip in with a goal of his own every now and then. This year, he's just not doing it, and it's showing. <laughs> I mean, Ben and Sagan, they're putting up numbers. They're putting up big numbers. But I'm thinking, Ben, he's not as physical as he's been in the past few years. No, he seems to be a bit more timid. He's kind of playing laid back. Like, there could be something wrong there. I'm not really sure, but... Yeah, or he's just worried about getting hurt. Yeah, seeing how they're... A little short on the players. Yeah. Just trying, trying and if to stay he in there. goes out now, it's kind of they're really in yeah. trouble. I mean, who are they going to have step up? Uh, the Frenchman Rossell. 
Yeah, I wouldn't really rely on that. I mean, Patrick Eves has been very good for he them this year. He's their goal leader. He's their goal leader, <laughs> which is not what you expect when you have a team of Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn. Or Patrick Eves. Or Patrick, well, you mean, uh, what's his name? Spezza. Spezza. Yeah. But I mean, Eves as... Uh, Eves up in that. You're not expecting him to be a goal scorer. No. I mean, he usually he does Drury chip Hodler. in some and stuff. Like Hodler's been terrible. I don't know why. I kind of expected that though when I they think signed Hoodler. I was fluke. like, I think it was, and it. I, you've seen him kind of going down. He was just getting points, but he didn't look right last year. Even though he just seemed to be in the right place, in the right got place, the right bounce, and yeah, yeah, always just bounced right for him. But he just didn't look right playing when he didn't have the puck or he wasn't yeah. set up. So I, I didn't really like that signing. But, I mean, you knew someone was going to. Yeah. He wasn't going to not get signed by a team. You know, got a lot of money for it. Yeah. Guess we'll just keep moving down those standings. We got the uh, Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, Winnipeg, I've been actually spending a lot of time watching their games recently. That team is so good. I just, you watch them and you're like, wow, this is such a good team. What sta- What place are they in? Oh, they're sixth in the division. How are they that far down? Because they are two lines. Yeah, their bottom six hasn't really produced much. But they have a solid defense, and you have Dustin Bufflin who produces points. And that off that top six is just downright nasty. Patrick yeah. Line is a monster. That kid can shoot. Shifley's Eler- like disappeared recently, though. Yeah, since he came back from that injury, he hasn't been what he was beforehand. But... I'm hoping he gets it going because he is also on my fantasy team. Yeah. But uh, Nikolai Ehlers, he hasn't really been putting up the points in the last couple of games. But he, but he so is so good doing it. He's flying around everywhere. He's setting everything up. He's getting himself the in all those positions. Those points are going to come for him. And if it's not this year, in the next year or two, that team is going to be making good playoff runs. I think they're going to s- probably soon start going on a little bit of a win streak. I mean, Trubas. Troop is back, and he's finally getting his form back, too. Little. Uh, little. Yeah, he's yeah. been looking good, too, since yeah. he's returned. He's, the got one pro- he's got his nine points in 12 games. Yeah. The one problem that Winnipeg has is they take so many penalties. They are, I think, leading the league, or they are almost they're, tied they're for the league. They're definitely in the top. For or I think Calgary might be ahead of them in penalties. And they're not, like, but good That's penalties. it. Like, no, they're just dumb. Like, yeah. the guy will be skating past them up the boards, and they'll just bump them and it's interference like mm-hmm. you don't need to take a dumb penalty like that and when it comes down to it i mean they're giving up all these power play goals you give up six power play goals over the course of you know two weeks that's two or three games yeah that you've lost because of it and especially if you lose by one hellebuck's still young i mean you gotta do something to help him yeah you got you can't be taking you know trips to the penalty box over and over and over again i still think he, he will be their goalie for the next few years he will he looks be. like he has the stuff just <laughs> They've also given him, I think, because at the start of the year, it was every other game. It was Hutchinson, Hellebuck, Hutchinson, Hellebuck, Hutchinson, Hellebuck. And then Hellebuck's now been starting, like, long streaks. He started the last four. He's before that. He had started, uh, I think, like, eight in a row or six in a row, something around there. And there was Hutchinson. Is Hutchinson's basically been, yeah, delegated to the backup role, and they're giving it to Hellebuck, which I think is the right move. I think Hellebuck will be a very solid. I don't think he's going to be an elite goalie in the league, but I think he's going to be a solid guy who posts like a 920 save percentage yeah. maybe every year. How long is Tyler Myers out for them? I actually don't know off the top of my it's head. Been, I, if he comes back, it's a big step up on their defense. Hopefully. Tyler Myers, you just never know what you're getting with him, though. A giant man. Yeah, That's giant a- man who has a lot of times finished with a really bad plus-minus yeah. rating. <laughs> <laughs> and not put up points. I mean, since his rookie season where everyone was like, this kid's the next stud defenseman. And the next year came up and it was like, all right, maybe it's a sophomore this slump. This is the big dud defenseman. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, it was like, all right, maybe it was a sophomore slump. Then the next year came and it was like, ah, junior slump. <laughs> eh, he just sucks. <laughs> as a veteran, he's getting a little slower. <laughs> yeah, as a veteran of four years. Uh, and I guess now we can move down to the team that is... Really that riding the struggle bus, <laughs> as you like to they put it. They have one less line for the Winnipeg <sighs> Jets. I don't, I don't understand though. You have Landeskog, Duchesne, McKinnon, Tyson Barry, all like they signed Soderberg in the offseason. Yeah, Soderberg, like almost all borderline, not maybe elite, but like very top 
And you start Rene Bork on line one. And you're starting Rene Bork on line one, and your team has 11 wins and 23 points. <laughs> it, it, it's absurd how bad this team is. I don't understand why they let Nick Holden go. Big the loss. Rangers got a steal on that deal. Yes. Because, I mean, I, when I heard Nick Holden was like they weren't going to resign him, I was kind of like, really? It's because he doesn't put up the pretty numbers. No, but he plays he solid everything. defensively. And now he's with the Rangers, he's putting up numbers. Yeah. I mean, not big numbers, but he's putting up, you know, for the what they got, you know, in him or what they've invested into him, they're getting plenty on their return. Oh, yeah, they definitely made out with that. Oh, yeah, and I was kind of like, isn't, like, Holden their number two defenseman there? Why are they just letting him go? And then... Like right now, they got Soderberg skating line four. He has the same exact points as Landeskog. Yeah, uh, which is sad. I think when this trade freeze is broken up, there has I've seen a lot of chat about they're going to blow it up. And I think... Of Duchesne, Landeskog, McKinnon, one of them will remain after this, but the other two will be gone. If they're smart, the saving one will either be Duchesne or McKinnon. Yeah. I would keep Duchesne. I would actually probably trade Duchesne because I think he almost has the most value on the trade market right now. Uh, I know Buffalo, I've heard, is very interested in him. But definitely to the right team, Landeskog can bring them in. A huge haul. It, yeah, it could bring them a very nice haul. It's just, a, you know, you got to find the right offer for him. Yep. You got to remember, he is still young, and he still has a lot of talent. But he's just not showing it right now. Yeah, Jer- Jer- Jerome McGinley, just retire. Yeah, I think your ride's over. You are not. Uh, Yamir Yager. Yeah, get traded to a team that's in cup contention. I've heard him link to Minnesota now. And sit okay. in the press box, maybe play fourth line minutes, and be like, hey, look, I was on a team that won the Stanley Cup. I got a ring. Goodbye. Yeah. Because you're not going to really help the team by playing at this point. You look old. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but you are out of Their it. Their goaltending just, they don't have it. Calvin yeah. Picard and Varlamov. I, that's the thing I never understood with Varlamov. I mean, he couldn't cut it. He couldn't ever make carve himself out that spot as the number one starter in Washington He'll when it was him few... and Michael Neuver. Yeah. They were always battling it out, but they went back and forth, and he never could pull ahead and get, make himself the starting goalie. And then Colorado went and signed him and made him their starting goalie. Like, he was like, he's never proven anything. And then he had one good year. He had a great year that year. Yeah, great year. I mean, like, all the everything in the world was for him to succeed. Mm-hmm. He did. And then he dropped the and ball. And then he just dropped it. Yep. And Picard... Got ran even over, over by the, the bus. Yeah. Picard has been was last year when he came in on relief when Varlamo was was injured and stuff like that. Picard was really good, but this year he hasn't I mean I don't know if it's him or the fact that they have no defense and they have Yeah, they're missing a lot They have no team, team. So, but I mean I mean they got spanked by the uh, Montreal Canadiens about a week or two ago now in that 10 to 1 blowout. Uh, it's <laughs> It's all bad news out there in Colorado. Well, we really, really can't leave out talking a little bit about the Blackhawks, their forwards. I mean, Panarin has been a monster yeah. this month. I mean, if we talk about the team for the past four years, we would probably be the same thing. Yeah. It's, K- it's uh, There's Kane just one new player every, every year. year. It's who's playing with them. Hosa's been actually having a big rebound year. He's been great. Like 16 goals. Where did that come from? Yeah, last year, nothing. You this year, he's back. You didn't even know what the net was last year. Yeah, I know. I was so disappointed when I drafted him last year, and he did nothing. And then I did. I passed up on him this year. Like, ah, he's done and over with. Oh, 16 goals. Thanks. But uh, Panarin's been huge for them again. Yeah. The he's... one thing I still don't like about Chicago is the fact that they're paying Taves $10.5 million. For 14 points. Yeah. It... He's such a great two-way forward. Yeah, at six million dollars, yeah, that's more understandable. I can understand maybe paying Patty Kane the ten million dollars to keep him there, because he puts up over a hundred points. But Taves making the same amount as Kane is laughable, and that's what always keeps him in this position. When that person comes up through the system, makes a name for themselves, like Panarin, you know, is doing now, and then come the next year or the year after they don't have room to sign him now 
because they're paying you know twenty million dollars to two people. Yep. And Corey Crawford's also commanding a decent amount of money, who is also having a fantastic year again. Yeah, their their goaltending has been good. Yeah. Um, Anissa Moss has been good for him. A lot of people said last year was a little bit when he put up those late numbers. Like, ah, oh, he can't do that. He's doing it. Yeah, he's always kind of been that streaky player, though. Yeah. It's just like, it shows up and you watch him some games and you're like, wow, this guy is good. And then, like, three games later, you're watching and you're just like, who was is he, that guy? Was he playing tonight? I don't remember hearing his name once at all. And you just see him kind of floating around, like, in a daze. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Get back into it. <laughs> <laughs> you forget how to hockey all of a sudden? Like, come on. Man, that pretty much does it for the Central. Uh, we got, still got some time. Got a question for you, Chris. Who did you make, say, is your most overrated forward, defenseman, goalie? For forward, my most overrated is TJ Oshie. I understand he is having a good year this year. But he's always... I like him. I like him, too. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying everyone's always been like... He's this the top guy and like one of the top guys in the league. He's going to put up like these huge numbers this year, and he never really has. His big the only reason he's such a big name is because of the shootout in the Olympics. I mean, yes. that's where he became, you know, famous. That's why everyone knows him. And like even when you look at like fantasy hockey projections for him, like every year they're projecting him to have like 30 goals and like 45 assists, and then he finishes the year with like 14 goals and you know, 28 assists. Yep. He never, like, everyone always projects him to be this big superstar, and he never really has put it together. This year, I will admit, he has been doing a lot better and actually has been kind of close, gotten closer to that potential. But I say overall, for his whole career, he's extremely overrated. Um, I would have said the lad, but I mean, his season is proving that he is overrated. Yeah, I mean, you don't even, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to really dig too far too far deep into that one to know. Oof. Yeah, what about a defenseman? <laughs> uh, my most overrated defenseman, again, kind of like TJ Oshie, TJ Oshie, he's good, but I think he's way overrated, and that is Drew Doughty. Yep. I, he's good. I'm not saying that he's a bad defenseman, that he does anything really wrong. But he is not a Norris Trophy winner. No. And the fact that they gave that to him last year was a joke. And, I mean, you could have given it easily. I mean, Eric Carlson deserves to win it basically every year for the past couple of years. And yeah. And will deserve to probably win it again this year. He could probably go under underrated. Yeah. Because he's that good on defense. He just on a change. terrible team, he's yeah. that good. I mean, Drew Doughty's had the benefit of playing on a great L.A. Kings team with Jonathan Quick in goal behind him. And a lot of large guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand. And, like, he doesn't put up big numbers, Dowdy. Like, he puts up decent numbers, good numbers for a defenseman. But, I mean, Carlson puts up, like, twice as much. He, you know, is just such a better player yeah. all around. And I I don't get why Drew Dowdy is, like, hailed as the big, awesome defenseman of the NHL. It's mine kind of along the same way, P.K. Subban. Yeah, I can also see that. He's loud. He lets you know he's there. I think he kind of puts a little bit more popularity on him. Yeah, because he's a showman. Yeah. Which the NHL just, doesn't have a lot of. But yeah, which is... I like it. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's as good as he says he is. Yeah. Or he's hyped up to be yeah. and everything like that. What about a goalie? Uh, I kind of touched on this before, but Pecorino is the most overrated goalie in the NHL, in my opinion. I mean... He had one good year in his entire career, and everyone is thinks he's like this great goalie and everything because you see him on the highlight reels making these you know fantastic because saves. He was so out of position, yeah, he but had that's to make the a great save. The problem is, it's like yeah, he's so far out of position that he had to dive back in to make the save. I mean, yeah, he's going to get a couple of them and he's going to show up in you know you know the highlight reel, but. He's not a good goalie. Like I said, he's two and three with a three point three three goals against and an eight eight two save percentage in his in the past two weeks. On the season, he has a nine eighteen save percentage, which is okay, but that was he had a hot start and since then has been terrible. Yep. And on his career, he's got a nine seventeen, which is really average. Yeah, that's goalie. Yeah, that's like goal. Yeah, exactly. I don't know any way better to say it than just <laughs> goalie. It's nothing that flashy, and yet everyone thinks he's so good. And I think that's really the thing that's... If Nashville starts to turn around and starts winning some games and really gets themselves into the playoffs, the thing that's going to kill them is Pecorino. Yes. They need such a better goalie. 
then they have it. Yeah. But they just <laughs> won't turn it over yep. to him yet. Yeah, for me, I'm going to have to say Brian Elliott. When the Blues had a choice of keeping either Elliott or Allen, I'm happy they kept Allen. Uh, yeah. For them, they would made the best decision letting Elliott go there. Yeah. I think that was also the right move. Allen's younger. Like, that Blues defense when Allen was that goalie, I mean... A homeless guy off the street would put up those numbers. Yeah, I could put up those numbers. <laughs> That's arguable. All right, I'm. Yeah, homeless guy right. might be a little better than you. <laughs> eh, all right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, uh, that's it for us today. Next week, we're gonna probably talk about at the end who we find is the most underrated player. Yeah. Uh, as well, well as the final division. Yeah, the final division, the uh, Pacific. 